everyone thank you for joining me now today I want to show you um, a bit of a sped up version of a live that I did so I did this in real time it took about an hour to run through this tutorial but I thought I'd do a sped up version for you here on YouTube so we're going to be creating or recreating kind of William Morris style backgrounds using dies and creating our own stamps it's really easy to do um, and hope you enjoy this tutorial and if you do please do give me a thumbs up and a subscribe now let's get started so the main supplies that you're going to need are some craft foam, uh, ideally the thicker the better, foam does die cut beautifully. If you uh, can get some with an adhesive backing that's even better for this project. You're also going to need some low tack tape, uh, some scrap paper or cardstock, a pencil and a ruler and some acetate. Now I don't use uh, normal acetate, I actually use shrink plastic because it's a little bit stronger and sturdier than usual acetate. Unless of course you've got something like construction acetate, a really heavy weight one. You could even use plastic packaging if you have something suitable. Then you're going to need some dies as well and the dies I've chosen are these from the textures range. Everything is going to be linked down below. Um, you'll need to consider whether or not you want to make these into uh, layering stamps as I have with this flora and fauna set. So the first thing you want to do is create yourself a template and this is where we map out uh, what our pattern is going to be or our tile is going to be. Um, for this project I used a two and a half inch by two and a half inch square, doesn't matter the size, uh, you're going to be repeating this pattern anyway so think about the size of your project. Um, and of course the size of your die cuts as well. I've got some quite small ones I can use. So just sketching that two and a half inch square in pencil. Um, the first few examples that I show you at the end and at the beginning, they were actually made using two inch squares. So you will get a very different look depending on the size squares that you create for this. Then you want to take your die cuts and start gluing them inside of this tile. Uh, try to fit everything inside the lines where you can or otherwise snip the die cuts to fit uh, and you don't really want any spaces where there's no design at all. You want to quite, kind of fill everywhere quite evenly if you can. Um, I like to have a focal point or two within the tile and in this case it's going to be my flower that I'm now sticking down. So it doesn't matter on the colour of the die cuts here just as long as you can see them clearly. So I'm actually using some little scraps almost, um, pieces that I've die cut in the past from the chosen die sets and not used. So that's why we've got all different colours laid out here. Um, but just keep in mind that you're going to want to recut these so make sure you do have the dies handy and you know where they are. Um, so just, like I said, just gluing everything down um, and this is only a template so don't worry uh, too much about how well they are stuck. Now to add uh, continuity to the pattern when we finally print it, I have got a couple of elements going off the edge or towards the edge of the um, line. So you can see the flower stem there in the bottom left hand corner, it leads into the edge of the design as does the vine in the top right corner as well. And this will just be a continuous pattern when we come to print this. You'll see what I mean when we get towards the end. So here I'm just filling in all the spaces with small little pieces. So I've got little almost teardrop shapes and such just to make sure there's no large areas with no design in. So the next stage is for you to then cut everything from foam. So those dies that you've chosen to use in the end, once you've uh, decided on your pattern, um, find those dies and cut them from the foam. So you'll need to cut these twice as well, so two of each. Um, foam cuts absolutely beautifully. You only need to ever run it through once. Um, so it shouldn't take you any time at all and it will go through I think all die cutting machines as well. Now all your foam pieces are die cut this is where we start creating our stamp. So we take the acetate or in my case the shrink plastic and you're going to just tape it over your uh, template that you've created um, with your die cut. So just take that down just so it doesn't move. And then we're going to use a glue and I tend to like to use a kind of glossy glue so um, glossy accents, um, I use Anita's 3D, uh, 3D clear gloss and then there's made to surprise clear glaze or accent glaze as well. Any of these will work. They just seem to dry a little bit quicker and better on the acetate. 
So I'm using the gloss and I'm just going to now stick my foam pieces directly over my pattern. So I'm recreating the pattern that we've chosen uh, on the acetate using the foam pieces. Uh, don't forget you may have cut some pieces down so as I did with this stem I need to make the stem a little bit shorter. You don't want any of your foam overlapping each other so if you do have any areas where um, where you've got longer pieces that overlap on the paper on the template make sure with the foam it's all one level so you trim those pieces to fit. Once you've uh, got all of your pattern down, what you want to do is remove your acetate. Be careful because the glue does take a little while to dry. Ideally, if you can leave it 10-15 minutes, it'll be perfect. Turn your tile over, your acetate stamp over, okay, and then put the second piece of uh, acetate over the top. And you're going to want to tape this down as well. Be gentle, like I say, with mine, the glue is still a bit wet, so I just need to be very careful. So just directly putting another piece of acetate or plastic over the top, taping it in one or two places just to ensure it doesn't move. And we're going to do exactly the same now. We've flipped the design. We're now going to recreate another stamp on the second piece of acetate, but the design is going to be reversed this time. So going back in with the same glue and all the same pieces. And if you remember, I said to you, you need to cut two of each of the foam pieces you've chosen. Um, and this is why. So now you should have two acetate tiles and they should be the exact reverse of each other. Again, be very careful when you're um, removing the tape and taking these away. Um, I've actually there not flipped one of them, um, but you can now start applying your ink to them. So starting with one, I'm actually going on to cotton fabric. Um, not for any reason other than I love the look of stamping on fabric, but you can absolutely do this on cardstock as well. And I've got examples in this video showing you uh, how, where I have stamped this onto cardstock too. So I'm using the colour Iced Spruce from the Distress Oxide range, inking it up. For the first couple of times you ink the foam, it's going to absorb a lot of ink, so you need to put quite a lot on there. And then simply turn over and press this into your um, paper or your fabric. Now. Do bear in mind the pattern is going to be flipped and repeated. So think about where, if you're working on a small area like this, what you want in the center, because that is, you're going to have four of those um, all quite close together. So that big flower is my focal point. So I've got that in the center of my piece, my panel of fabric. So there's one stamp and then take the next stamp, the other one, ink that up. And what you'll notice is this is, as I say, a reverse, a flip of the first one. So once you've got enough ink on there, and I am applying more than usual, you'll notice if you put it directly over the first image, you can flip it 180 degrees and it should sit exactly next to there. So pushing that all down. And then I'm going to do the same top and for the top two as well. So again, you've got that design there I'm just I think I'm re-stamping that one there because uh, I missed a little bit or a flower moved because the glue wasn't dry um, going back to my first stamp here and this will be in the opposite corner to where I stamped it the first time round and you'll start to see that pattern building up now like I say you can do this on smaller tiles and do it stamped over a larger area you could do larger tiles and end up with it stamped over a smaller area so let's just see how this one looks when we lift this one up too. There we go. And lastly, let's just do this fourth one as well so you can see the finished result. Now, of course, you could stop here if you wanted to. You could just do one layer of stamping uh, and you'll get lots of different effects by using different coloured inks on different coloured papers. But we want to take it a little bit further and do some layered stamping as well. And we can do that with these dies. So um, because I use layering dies, it's nice and easy. So what I've done is I've got my two stamp tiles and I'm putting fresh piece of acetate over each of them. Now I have flipped them over um, because this is the way they will stamp. Um, it doesn't matter whether you do it on the inked side or on the reverse, but either way you need to use them again as a template. And we're just going to glue some more foam die cut pieces, but take a look at your dies because these will be the top layer 
of those die cut pieces. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you don't have layering dies, what you could do here to add an additional color is add in some smaller details like uh, small dots and swirls in some of the gaps instead. Um, like I say, I'm using the actual layering element from the dies, um, but I'm also going to be using things like the center of the flower, so the dot in the center of the flower as well. Um, that bit usually falls out and I'm popping that back onto this second layer. Again, once we stamp that, this will make a little bit more sense, but you want to do it again twice so you get both uh, reverse images. There we go, so I've got my uh, second layer of colour. It's always less, this one, much smaller, much quicker to do. And I'm just inking it, this time with a, a Memento ink pad, a little bit smaller. I'm just working out whereabouts this one's going to fit, which layer it's going to go on to. So just there, you can see the three elements that I'm going to be stamping, this time in a purple. You can really have some fun with the different colour combinations that you can um, achieve with these, particularly when you're doing the layered stamping. And you see it just adds that purple design into the centre of those flowers, the buds and such. Then that one is going to go into the diagonal uh, tile as well. So again, just going to ink it up a second time and go over to the diagonal corner because I know this one's going to fit there also. So press that down, just being careful to only press over the foam I don't think I had any ink on the background, but if you do get ink on your acetate, be careful not to press that into your paper or fabric. And then I'm going to do the same with the second design, so the flip, the reversed sign design too. So again, just very carefully inking this up. There's a multitude of inks that will work on foam and stamp. Try them all. I think the only one that might not work is something like a stays on is a bit dry and could just dry on your foam eventually. Um, but literally any other stamp, any other ink really will work for this. So uh, have a play with what you've got at home. And it's really interesting to see what dyes you've got at home as well and which will work. I think the smaller the better. Anything that's sort of florals, leaves, swirls, as long as they're not too large. And it's a really good opportunity for you to get using some of those uh, smaller accent dyes that you get in die sets that... Uh, sometimes maybe you don't often worry about fiddling around with getting out. Uh, you can definitely use them for this design. But as I said, the three die sets that I've used for my design here, uh, they are absolutely perfect. They're all available and they're all linked down below in the description. So here's just the fourth layer of those, uh, that top layer of colour, the purple. And there we go. There's our finished piece. So as you can see, by using this handmade DIY uh, stamp technique, you can create lots of different patterns in lots of different colors by changing the size and the design of the tile each time. So I hope you've had fun with this. Please do give me a thumbs up and a subscribe, and I hope to see you here again very soon. Mm -hmm.